is Fred Rael. I'm a, I build lowriders here in Española, New Mexico. I've been doing it for about 38 years. I started building cars when I was about 15 years old. I, uh, I had Volkswagens, LTDs, Caprices. I've had a bunch of different cars. I, I started very young. Uh, I don't think I had my driver's license when I began, but I just kept going from there. It, it uh, never slowed down. I just keep getting more and more cars now. I think from the from the Rael side, I'm the first uh, generation of lowrider. And I think uh, my sons are probably gonna continue with the tradition. Española has had a long history of lowriders, and I think for a lot of the people that do live here, a lot of the families that grew up here, it's been passed on from generation to generation. And, you know, they, they see the cars and they find that that's something that they want to do as well. It's, it's, it's somewhere between a hobby and an obsession. It's the one thing that I've been known for. You know, a lot of people that I don't even know, they're like, oh, you're, you're the one that builds the lowriders. Do you still have that 64 convertible, you know, that I used to see 20 years ago or 10 years ago? You know, I've been very fortunate over the years to to be still building cars that are relevant and you know I've been on some magazine covers I've done a few interviews for for television shows a lot more people get to see what you do and why you do it and they you know a lot of people have their impression of lowriders that they're you know kind of scary and, and bad people and then they come to find out you know they're just people with families like everybody else when you find a, a project car, you're going to find one that's you know 40 or 50 years old. It's going to have some rust issues. It's going to have some mechanical issues. So, in order to build a, a true show car, you're going to want to take the entire car apart and finish every piece of the car. That's every nut and bolt. You know, you want to do it the right way. You don't want to you don't want to fix up your car and then find a whole lot of mechanical problems later on. I mean, the, the worst thing to do is have a really nice car stuck stranded on the side of the road. So, I never really did a whole lot of activities, especially like in high school and all. All of that the thing I do remember is is you know I did go to school and then after school I went to work that's what I did I just worked and and even after I graduated from high school I just worked two or three jobs so I'd have enough money to be able to fix up these cars my two biggest challenges in life in general are distance and time uh, when you need to go somewhere that's far away let's say you're going traveling to a car show and you got to travel you know a couple states away you know you're gonna spend 10 or 12 hours on the road you know when you want to build a project like this I mean you start out with you know with the raw materials and it's not something that you can do overnight I mean you might spend years doing it and of course you you know the time that's where time becomes more important is just trying to get everything done and still be able to live your life as well I've managed to, to to be off the grid for a long time in my life. You know, a lot of people would tell me, you know, do you do Facebook, do you do Instagram, or any of these things, and, and I, I just never really seemed to have the time to get involved in all that. I, I've just been building cars and showing cars, and it becomes a 24-7 a car show, you know, with friends that I have all the way from Sweden to Los Angeles, you know, and to other states. Instead of waiting till the next time that you see this person that you haven't seen in six months, I mean, you already know, he's already working on another project, he's already got the wheels for it, he's been getting the interior done, so it it's really makes it a lot of fun because you see it right as it's happening, you know, be, rather than waiting till the result is completely finished. Yeah, there, there is a lot of sacrifice in order to build show cars. I see, you know, there are a lot of times, you know, family members will come and they'll say, oh, we're going, we're going fishing or we're going to the state fair or we're going to go do something. and, and you know, you miss out on a lot of that because you're in here sanding your car or you're in here putting it together and anytime you have a day off from work, instead of instead of going out of town on a trip, you're in here working on a car or, or either that or you're trying to do make some extra money so you can buy more parts for your car. I would like to be remembered as somebody that really just, uh, you know, was really dedicated to the sport and somebody that was really interested in building these cars and I think I have all of these ideas and I just have to get them out there and, and you know I have these color ideas and ways of building cars that you know and hopefully my, my children will continue the tradition.